Hey guys, it's Aiden back with another vlog. All right, so today we got Ian it's your boy. and Jared joining us in our lovely vlog. All right, today we're gonna to be talking about the Renaissance. Yes, the Renaissance. All right, so let's get started into the video. All right, guys, so now we're gonna be talking a little bit about the origin of the Renaissance. The Renaissance is considered the beginning of modern European history. The Renaissance was from 1300s to 1600s. It occurred first in Italy in 1300 and lasted until 1527. The Renaissance spread to Northern Europe around 1450. In England, the Renaissance did not begin until the 16th century and lasted until early 17th century. 19th century historian Jacob Burkhardt claimed that the Renaissance period stood in distinct contrast to the Middle Ages. Renaissance culture applied almost exclusively to the upper classes. Upper classes had the luxury of time to spend learning the classics. Peasantry was largely literate and the Renaissance ideas had little impact on common people. Working classes and small merchants were far too preoccupied with the concerns of daily life. Northern Italian cities developed international trade. Competition among city states meant that Italy did not unify politically. In effect, an early balance of power pattern emerged where weaker states would ally with other states to prevent a single state from dominating the peninsula. Oh, hey there. <laughs> I didn't see you. Here are some major states and figures. Republic of Florence, including Republic of Gano, was a center of Renaissance during the 14th and 15th centuries. It was dominate, dominated by the Medici family. Cosmo de Medici, who lived from 1389 to 1464, allied with other powerful families of Florence and became the official ruler of the Republic. Most powerful of the Medici rulers. Lorenzo de Medici, the Magnificent, lived from 1449 to 1492. He was a significant patron of the arts, which was the Sons of Cosmo. Duchy of Milan was ruled by the Sforza family after 1450. Milana was the major enemy of Venice and Florence. The Peace of Lodi, 1454, created a 40 year period of relative peace in Northern Italy. The peace was, in part, a response to concerns over the Ottoman conquest of Constantinople a year earlier. It created a stable balance of power for time. In Rome, the Papal states Popes served as both religious and political leaders and controlled much of central Italy. The Venetian Republic was the longest lasting of the Italian states that did not succumb to the foreign powers until Napoleon conquered it in the early 1800s. It was the greatest maritime power in Italy and was one of the world's great na naval and trading powers during the 14th and 15th century. Naples Kingdom of the two Sicilies included southern Italian region of Naples and the island of Sicily. It was the only Italian city-state to officially have a king. It was controlled by France between 1266 and 1435 and was controlled by Spain after 1435. Decline of Italian city-states. French invasions began in 1494 the First Italian War. <laughs> Milan's despot Ludovico the Moor encouraged French King Charles VIII to invade Naples, the traditional enemy of Milan. <laughs> this was the beginning of foreign invasions throughout the Italian peninsula. When Florence attempted to appease France during its invasion in 1494, it led to the overthrow of the Medici family. Although the Medici family returned to power several years later, Florence by then was severely weakened. Girolamo Savonarola, 
Rola became the unofficial leader of Florence between 1494 and 1498, pledged to rid Florence of its... Descendants and corruption, in effect, oversaw a theocracy in Florence. He had earlier predicted the French invasions due to paganism and moral decay in the it Italian cities. Italy became a battleground in a series of power struggles between Spain and France. Spanish fears of a French Italian alliance result in Spain's alliance with Venice, the Papal State, and Holy Roman Empire. Niccolo Machiavelli lived from 1469 to 1523. <laughs> One of his works of art was The Prince, which was created in 1513. The quintessential political treatise of the 16th century observed the political leadership of Caesar Borgia, who was the son of Pope Alexander VI, who had ambitions of uniting Italy under his control. He stated that politically, this ends justifies the means, and stated for that, that for rulers, it was better to be feared than to be loved. Rulers had to be practical and cunning in addition to being aggressive and ruthless. At times rulers should have behaved like a lion, which was aggressive and powerful, and other times like a fox, cunning and practical. The prince continued to influence European rulers for centuries. The sack of Rome in 1527 by armies of the Holy Roman Emperor Charles V, who was also the King of Spain, symbolized the end of the Italian Renaissance. In Italy. Many advances were made during the Renaissance. This included advances in art, literature, architecture, science, and philosophy. Art was a major aspect of life during this time. Therefore, it was bound to advance. Art became more independent unlike the medieval ages. New mathematics and geography allowed paintings to have perspective. Also, sculptures were largely copied from classical statues. As people moved into cities, there was more health so people could buy more art. Literature changed from medieval to renaissance. The medieval literature had religious topics. It was formal and was written in Latin, which very few people knew. The renaissance was written in several different dialects, with individual style based around thoughts and feelings and secular topics were relating to earthly life rather than religion. Renaissance architecture was based off classical Roman examples. The revival of classical Rome was important to architecture and literature. Classical orders and architectural elements from the vocabulary of Renaissance buildings. These are words such as pilasters, pediments, and two laboratories, arches and dome. Renaissance architecture is characterized by humanist form, but mathematical proportion and a unit of measurement based on the human scale. Great examples of Renaissance architecture are Michelangelo's David and the ceiling of the Sistine Chapel. Advancements in science were pretty low, as history and politics were preferred by humanists. Alchemy was quite popular and is the ancestor of modern chemistry, although not a lot of actual science was going on. Renaissance thinkers considered the Middle Ages to have been a periodic cultural decline. They aimed to boost their culture through re-emphasizing classical texts and philosophies. They expanded and interpreted them, creating their own style of art, philosophy, and scientific inquiry. The styles of paintings, sculptures, and decorative arts identified with the Renaissance emerged in Italy in the late 14th century. Artists such as Giorgione, developed a method of painting in oil directly on canvas. This technique of painting allowed the artist to rework an image, as opposed to fresco painting, which was on plaster, which would not be able to be reworked. The monastery style had developed in opposition to the naturalism of high Renaissance art, and mannerism spread from Florence and Rome to become the dominant style in Europe. Renaissance art continued to be celebrated, however, the Florentine artist Giorgio Vasari would write the High Renaissance as the peak of the Italian art, a process that began in the late 13th century. Renaissance art spread mostly to Northern Europe. Patrons of the church would sponsor artists to paint their walls and decorate the place. This was one way to promote religious spread through belief of a society. This concept, concept of patrons 
helped spread art, mostly throughout Northern Europe. Renaissance art. All art produced during the 14th and 15th centuries, paintings, architecture, sculpture, music, and literature all increased awareness of natural learning and individual view of men. The word Renaissance means rebirth. Nature, humanism, and individualism became more dominant in paintings and artwork in the 15th and 16th centuries. Secularism, a changing economy, and greatly increasing social mobility were also happening during the 15th and 16th centuries. Michelangelo was a very well-known artist from Florence, Italy. He became a painter, sculptor, and architect. He has one drawing of a pair of legs, which include muscles from both, and bones in the right leg. He painted in rooms of the church with his paintings of the human body. He studied the human body in these rooms. He looked towards art and science for answers about the human body and not religion. This is an example of humanism. Art was mainly focused on humans, and this is a perfect example of humanism, because this painting includes the dissection of the human legs. Leonardo da Vinci was another artist from this time. One of, the, one of his most well-known paintings is the Mona Lisa. This picture is of a middle-aged woman who is sitting and somewhat crossing her arms. She has an on a greenish robe and is sitting in front of trees in a lake. Raphael was another well-known artist in this period. He created the portrait of Pope Julius II. One more famous painter from this time period was Giorgini. He created a painting called The Holy Family, which includes three main people, a baby, a woman, and a man. This painting is yet another example of humanism because during this time period, people painted and sculpted people. And this picture is about three individual people, which goes towards the theme of humanism. This painting could impact society today because it can help show us how advanced they were in terms of architecture. Arches were also included in this painting, and that can give us information about their structural advancements. Artists have all impacted our world today, and their artwork has told us information about that day and age. Artwork is also an example of secularism as well as humanism. Artwork was mostly based upon religious purposes, but now it is being created for science and learning about the human body. This shows humanism because paintings were becoming more and more based upon the human body, and this shows secularism because people were, and artists were turning to science and stopped turning to religion for answers. In the European Middle Ages, there is a tendency for many religious followers who despise human affairs and focus on God and the afterlife. People were showing more interest in fulfillment and achievement than religion. Many viewed secularism as anti-Christian and anti-religious. Secularism came into the Renaissance in the form of humanism. Francisco Petrarca, also known as Petrarch, was the first great humanist. Born in 1304 in Florence, he believed he could learn to make the world a better place by studying classical literature. He shared his studies by expressing the classical text into his own words in the Latin language. After Francisco Petrarca, humanism was spread first through Italy, then through other parts of Europe. From the mid to late 1400s, many scholars in Florence began to follow Francisco Petrarca's way of humanism. Florence became the center of humanistic learning. Humanists expanded their studies into politics. They discovered patriotism and began to use and solve their problems. Humanists used the literature that they learned and applied it to their own everyday language. This was the foundation of literary development in non-Latin writings. Through patriotism, they used this to write about the city's history. During the 15th century, some humanists expanded the study of texts to include Greek. For the first time, Greek writings were read in the original language of Western Europe. For the outcome of the expansion of humanism to Greek texts was the more precise understanding of Greek philosophy. Italy was the hub for humanism and sent away and took in many studies. The ideas of Italian humanism spread throughout many parts of Western Europe. Before the end of the 15th century, the difference between Italian humanism and Northern humanism is their different histories. Humanism began to spread through Europe and eventually churches began to use humanism. Biblical humanists generally believe in the un unity of church and wanted to preserve reformed Catholic tradition. Alright guys, sadly we're going to have to end the video, but before we go, we are going to review Renaissance Humanism and Renaissance Secularism. 
Renaissance humanism was when people wanted to see what humans could achieve. They wanted to influence and change the world based on human potential. And Renaissance secularism is when people started to move towards science for all their answers. They stopped going towards religion for all their answers. They wanted evidence. They wanted proof. They wanted reasoning of why things were happening. So they went to science. They stopped turning towards religion. And basically, secularism and humanism was when they just completely, not completely, but for the most part, they stopped with the religion. They wanted real proof and answers. They wanted to see all that humans could do. All right, so we'll see you later. Make sure to comment, like, subscribe the video. We'll see you later.